In MathCAD, a function can call other functions. You're probably familiar with writing your own custom user functions involving some of the built-in functions from MathCAD. For example, you might use vector and matrix functions, statistics functions, trigonometric functions, and so on. But recently we had a community challenge involving alternating circuits. Here were the input values for voltage, resistance, inductance, capacitance, and the frequency of the alternating current. And then we had some different functions. I wanted to test the math for myself. And so we have a function for the reactance of the capacitor, the reactance of the inductor, and then the impedance and the phase angle. And I initially wrote the functions for the impedance using the reactances as inputs. Then I realized, hey, this should really use the functions that are already written for the reactants and the capacitor. So let's go about and make the changes to do that. So for the impedance, instead of passing the reactances as inputs, I'm going to pass the values for the capacitance, inductance, and the frequency. So let's make those changes. Let me delete this and put in a capital C for the capacitance. And then let me delete the reactants for the inductor and put in an L and add in a, another input for the frequency. And now let's change this to a function. I'll hook I'll hit the open parentheses and then pass the values that will go to this function, will be, which will be L and F. And let's do the same thing for the reactants for the capacitor. Hold on, let me make sure, make sure I'm getting my cursor positioned in the right place. Let me do open parentheses. And this one will get C and F. And let me click outside. And there we have our updated formula. Same thing for the phase angle. Instead of passing the reactances, I am going to pass the values for C, L, and F. So let's make those changes. Delete this, put in a C. Let's delete the reactants and put in an L. And let's add in one other additional variable. Let's put in the frequency. And then I decide, you know what? Let me make sure that these are matching the same order. So let me actually go here, put R comma, and then C and L. Let's get rid of R out of here. Just something to help reduce the errors that could happen. Now let's pass the variables to the functions. Let me put open parentheses and we will pass L and F. And same thing for the reactants. Let's do open parentheses, and we will pass C and F. And so now I've updated both of those formulas, the, both of those functions, and we can try the different values. So let's evaluate. Let me put in a little bit of text to indicate that. Evaluate, if I can spell today. And now let's try these out. So let's see, for the reactance of the capacitor, let's do X, and then I will do the subscript C. And I did that with the keyboard shortcut of the control and then the minus sign. And then let's do open parenthesis. And I used the same names for the variables as I did for the inputs for the formulas. Normally I don't like doing that, but I did it. C and F, and then let's hit the equal sign. And that looks good. Let me just position over here and do the same thing for the inductor. X, control minus L. And we're going to pass the values for L and F and then hit the equal sign. We've got that value. Let's scroll down and pass in the value for, or excuse me, evaluate our impedance, Z. And we're passing R, C, L, and F. And then hit the equal sign. And lastly, let's do the phase angle. And so we've got our phi sign. I will go to the symbols and look for it in here. Is it this phi? Yep, it's this phi. Let's do phi. And we're passing the variables in the same order. R, C, L, F, and then equals. 
and this is the value that is in radians. If you want to, you can go to units and let's go to angle and maybe we want to report it in degrees and then click outside. There we have the value for the phase angle. And so that's how you can use user-defined functions in your other user-defined functions.